record. Hello, everyone, and welcome to To Be Released. We're here to talk about Dokkan. Isn't that right, Zen? It is right. See, still Dokkan. It's still Dokkan. We haven't changed the entire theme of the show yet. No, even though <laughs> it sometimes feels tempting, <laughs> it never uh, it never happens. Except for that one time on April Fool's Day when it was uh, To Be Rasengan. But that, oh, I... right. Our... Man, that wouldn't even be topical anymore because that game is hella dead. No, so of course we're going to have to find a completely different game for April Fool's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but besides oh, that... Oh, yeah, that's coming up. Shit. Yeah, we have to think about it. But you know what else is up? Uh, as of this release, it's Valentine's Day, Zen. It's the... uh, oh, yeah. Well, is it going up on Valentine's Day? It should be. All right, then. It's Valentine's Day. Happy, happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's nerds. Day, everyone. Nerd. <laughs> yeah, all you nerds out there. <laughs> and the <laughs> as of when I checked it, YouTube has finally said I now have a 1% female viewers. Ah, no, we did it. We did it. We did it, everyone. Through pure force of dumbass will, we have found a way to get me one other <laughs> uh, female viewer, even though every other word of, of my mouth when it comes out related to girls is actual garbage. Correct. But we still made it, and that's what matters. Exactly. And speaking of dudes who don't really try that hard when it comes to women, Dokkan... <laughs> is in a weird place <laughs> because i feel like they're finally uh we're gonna be bring- segue. yeah excellent segue so we're gonna be putting three of the other uh pitchy peachy gals or aka waifu units up on the scale to look at um i will say again as our feelings on my feelings on dokkan is that even though they make good female units now they're still considered a joke team so i don't know if that will ever improve it seems especially worse the more legend seems to just release units that are actively breaking the game and then are women. Really? Yeah, Legends is like really into making good girl characters. Yeah, and I feel like they they're they're also kind of joking, but also the joke is deadly. <laughs> yeah, like well, I mean Khalifa and Kale at least makes sense because no, they're yeah. Super Saiyans and they're fighting in the tournament of power. Uh yeah. Chi Chi's passive is an eighty percent damage boost against Goku and Gohan and Goten. Yeah, it's the entire Sun family, <laughs> which I feel like that's a joke because they're like, well, obviously Chi Chi would deal a shit ton of damage to any of the other family. They're like, you're right. Let's make it eighty <laughs> percent. Like almost Let's make it an absurd amount of damage. Like, I feel like at that point, if you play against her weakness and you're a Goku, you might as well just forfeit. If that's the end match result, how do you win? And she's green, so she's countercolor to Kaioken. Oh, yeah, that's a... Uh... So they decided that the ult... <laughs> it's more of a counter than the Vegeta green that came out with him. But yeah, uh, the, that's Legends. But now let's talk about Dokkan, even though I feel like deep down we would just end up talking about Legends forever. So let's put up the first female. We already did Chi Chi, as I stated before. She's a 5 out of 5 big boy. She deserves to be up there along with Krillin and Gogeta. <laughs> the other 5 out of 5s. Uh, but let's start <laughs> with... Yeah. Let's start with... Um, android 18 riding on a horse which sounds weird but that's her card art i'm just going to explain it by card art now she's <laughs> she's on a horse she's no longer holding up the chinese dress and uh her pa- uh her passive is good mood today <laughs> attack uh, attack and defense 14 percent up for each acquisition of the care ball and then when there is a peachy gal category on the team she gets an attack and defense by one percent for each ally so I want to say it's an additional 6% if it's a full female team? No, 7%, right? Uh, 7 sounds correct. Yeah, 7. I forget about the leader because you build 6 in a team, but then you get a leader friend. So if you have, um, if you use a friend... Unless they don't count duplicates. Huh. Yeah. Because the think... leader is always a copy of who you have. Usually. I don't think they do, though. I don't think that's the way they roll. There's not a lot of units like this. I'll actually say I think the female units are the only ones like this where they get 
boost depending on how many uh, Peachy Gal uh, units are on the team. I think they're the only ones that do that. So. Um, because there are units that obviously only buff these units, but it's usually like when it's on the field, right? So they'll give plus well, two key. Well, I know Paragus gets special buffs specifically for pure blooded Saiyans, but I think he buffs them. I don't think he gets buffed. Hmm. Yeah, this is the this is the difference. Is she buffs herself. Be the way that's hers, and then her link skills are innocent twins, android, woman warrior, permanent energy furnace, and rebirth. Innocent she murdered a lot of people. L- listen, man, Majin Buu is also on the innocent link. We could, we <laughs> but could... he like had a childlike naivete about it. Like he didn't know that it was bad. Beerus is on innocence. Okay, well that's his job. He's just doing his job. Do okay. Let's let's just continue on and looking at all the innocent people. Super Boo is on innocence, and he knows okay. that it. What okay, he's... okay. <laughs> he killed the entire human race. He did. Weerus, who is literally Weiss and <laughs> Weiss and Beerus together, they should know better. Innocent. Yeah, you think Weiss would know? The female Kai. Oh, boo. The female Kai is on the innocence link. Uh, I don't know anything about her other than that she got her ass kicked by Boo. Yeah, and she's, uh, yeah. Maybe she was innocent in all of that. It's true. Which then, in turn, would make Boo not innocent for brutally beating her to death. So, I don't know. It's hard to tell. Uh, Bra is on innocence, and I feel like she actively tried to murder people. No, Vegeta tried to murder people in her defense. All right, fair enough. I, I won't put that on her. Uh, Kid Goku. Right. Oh, Kid Goku can't blame fits. The daughter for the sins of the father. Exactly, Goku. Of which there are many. Uh, Goku is on it as well, and I feel like uh, Kid Goku specifically. I think uh, adult Goku should also have innocence on him. <laughs> it doesn't feel like. Uh, yeah, he's not. He's not particularly less innocent than anybody else. No, fat uh, fat Janemba is on innocence as well, which is also hilarious. I mean, he's just a Boo clone, so... Yeah, except for really big and fat. Yeah, well, he's just he's got the height to go with the fat. Boo didn't have the height. It's true. This, <laughs> All right, that's enough on the innocence. It's a really weird link. <laughs> I agree with you. It's a weird link. Um, But yeah, that's her. She rides on a horse. I don't remember her super attack, but I assume it's pretty okay. It's hard I to tell. Does it, wait, does she have the horse in her sprite? Yeah. Oh, damn it! I don't think she has the horse on the sprite. Mm, that's gonna be points off. Yeah, I feel. I feel like um, compared to the last picture, because the last picture, like uh, her holding the Chinese dress, there's like she's the only one that doesn't have hearts in the background. She has like weird like poison effects. <laughs> because she's a horrific monster. At yeah, that point. at that point, as far as you know. But then when she's on the horse, again, no hearts, but there are, like, little stars and stuff. So I feel like they're trying to say, like, yes, she's technically going on a, not a murder spree, because this version of 18 is not the murderer, I think. But she still is doing something. Is that just Mom 18? I don't think this is Mom 18. Passes I think her days uh, riding horses? Yeah, I mean... Uh, if only it was Android 18 and Marin, that'd be a complete, that'd be a different ball game. And now we'd be talking about a completely different unit. But yeah, I think. Oh, it's a uh, okay. No, she's a hundred percent on a murder spree in this picture. Oh, is it the? Is it the? Um, is it the the other one? It's the future Android 18. Uh, well, I don't know if it is meant to be, but that the only time I remember her riding a merry-go-round is when they're when they blow off uh, future Gohan's arm. Okay, so that's a. I feel like that's a point good enough right there. I should mention the blowing off of future Gohan's arm is maybe the funniest thing because it follows. Future Gohan losing his arm is great because he's basically following in Piccolo's footsteps, except for he can't regrow it back. Yeah, well, he could have, but he gave the sense of being to Trunks. Wait, can arms get? Oh, I guess because they didn't like chop it off. It was just like kind of dead. It, it well no it exploded off it was gone okay but you can't sense who beat an arm back i don't think that's how that works uh well they certainly implied you could in the special really yeah because i'm pretty sure that trunks actually says uh if only you hadn't given me that you'd still have your arm 
Are you sure Trunks is just an idiot kid and doesn't know what he's talking about? Because that feels... I am not I am not ruling that out, because that happens a lot. But I do think he specifically said, if you didn't give me that bean, you'd have your arm. And Gohan was like, oh well, shit happens. Oh well, you know what, to be fair, when Krillin gets a spike through the chest, he does take a healing, and then his uh, thing gets, like, his internal organs are yeah, saved. It replenishes the, the organ damage, so I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't regrow an arm. That wasn't a sensu bean, that was dende. But let's assume that one dende is equal to one sensu bean. There then... has to be, at some point in time, an image of someone being fed a sensu bean, and then they have healed wounds that they didn't have before that. There has to be. Okay. Hmm. Do you think that if Tien, after losing his hand to Nappa, if he had eaten a sensu bean, he would have gotten his hand back? I don't see why not. I, I am not the authority on Senzu Bean function. Okay. But I don't see why that wouldn't have happened. Now, here's another thing. Why didn't Tien come back without a hand? Does the Dragon uh, Balls bring him back? soul has hands, obviously. <laughs> I thought, like, the, the soul goes back into the body, and last I checked, his body had no hand. I think they ended up making them... Didn't they, like, make them new bodies because their old bodies were so fucked up? They had to do Kami that... Made them... They had to do that for Chiaotzu because he had no body. Because he fucking exploded himself. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, Yamcha was like rotting in a crater for a hot minute too, so. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good oh, point. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yamcha ate a senzu bean after Dr. Zhuro stabbed him through the chest and it restored all the skin and stuff. All right, you're correct. And with <laughs> all that, I think we're finally ready to put the Android 18 up on the big boy scale. What are you, how are you feeling right now? Um... Oh, fun fact. Sensu beans also regrow teeth. Uh, <laughs> That's disgusting. I didn't yeah, it is. <laughs> it's pretty gross. Um, I'm going to go with a three out of five because I thought she was on a real horse and it's just a merry-go-round horse. Yeah. I do like the reference again to the future Gohan act, but it's not a real horse. If it was a real horse and her sprite had a horse, I think there would be no contention. Just a flying horse? Yeah, 100%. 100%. Uh, she and, would be perfect. Android 18. Five five, yeah, 5 out of 5. Let me put it. <laughs> if they release an Android 18 update and she is an LR with a flying horse, we will give her the 5 out of 5. I will uh, give her past a 5 out of 5 if she's an LR with a flying horse. All right. Again, if that happens, we will reevaluate her. But for right now, a 3 out of 5 is pretty good. Yeah, she's fine. Yeah, she's fine. She's in the middle of the road. Yeah. And now, let's go on to another girl. We're going on to Videl, super intelligent Videl. And I, her pose kind of looks like I think she's mid-flight, but she also kind of looks like when your dog finds out that you're home. And <laughs> She does look like that. <laughs> so she's very happy to see you right now, and she's just like coming right straight towards you. And you're just like, I just got home from work. I really don't have time for this, but also you're already here and you're adorable. So yeah, <laughs> there's no fighting. I've this. had that exact conversation with Videl before. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a common one. <laughs> I I'm just gonna mention the name of her super attack because this is what Google Translate calls it: the Hawk Charge. Doesn't she have a move that's called like Eagle Kick or something? Yes, but I guess they change they translate that as the Hawk Charge. <laughs> Uh, her pass I don't know, that's a pretty cool attack name. If I could have a hawk charge, I would do it. Yes, it's very good. It sounds like a wrestling name, which is uh, accurate to her dad, at least. Uh, passive skill is reputation of ability. Team Peachy Peachy Gal category, alley, one body per attack and defense, 50% up. And Did attack you say alley, not ally? No, I'm reading it as I see it on Google uh, Translate. And it's spelled alley with an E? Oh, no, I say alley because it helps because it's broken English. So I feel oh, so it you helps. Just contribute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I do usually say ally. I'm just going to but... violently correct your pronunciation from now on. I mean, you've been doing that for the past couple <laughs> years now. <laughs> so. <laughs> ally. Oh, okay, now I'll do it for you. Ally, one body per attack in defense, uh, 50% up. Attack of the enemy, two turns, 20% down, and gave 20% recovery of damage. So I think. I'm trying to remember if it's. When she takes damage, she gets 20% of it back. Or it's That's when... Good. Or so if it's... Yeah. She is a healer. She's like a slightly a small healer. And her links are Courage, Rich, Calm Judgment, Champion of the Force, Woman Warrior, and Rebirth. 
I'm just going to say right now, she has literally one key link that is a passive up, and it's Calm Judgment giving 20% defense, and everything else is key links. Yikes. But maybe good? I don't know. I don't know. I know. It's kind of hard for this. At least she'll super. Well, it's hard to tell if you're ever going to super if you're not a Saiyan. Well, to be fair, female warriors all have woman warrior, so they always get plus two key. And they oh. all have rebirth, so they always have four key. <laughs> Okay. So That's fair. Yeah, so they'll 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 always launch their super attack. That's never their problem. In my experience using them anyway. That's never the problem with them. So she just doesn't do any fucking damage at all. No, but she does increase she's more of a support unit, I would say. Which at that point it's more like, do you really need attack on a support unit? <laughs> Yeah, I can see that. By the way, while we're recording this, they released the information for LR Oob and Vegeta Jr. Oh, fuck me. Are we going to stop everything and see what's... <laughs> give our uh, breaking intermission. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. This is fucking alarm bells going off. Play breaking the news. Play the Grand Tour theme. <laughs> okay so hidden demon power oob spelled o-u-b so i guess half of the japanese half of the english spelling oh. specified oob adolescence even though i don't think we ever see him not in adolescence fair enough um combined with mr boo in 40 hp or less so he transforms after 40 percent health i guess okay um Change the one kind of the attribute gas ball to the rainbow gas ball by 100% up the attack and defense of own. Okay. Uh, and then more energy plus two each time the energy rises in the rainbow gas ball acquisition. Uh -huh. Watch out for the power that wells up. Okay. Um, I don't know if that passive is good, but this... It sounds like... He transforms under forty percent health. Yeah. He changes one of the one one color to rainbow. He gets a hundred percent attack and defense to himself, and then he gets two key per rainbows. I will say that's that does work at least with Super Saiyan Four, Vegeta, and Goku, since they do use rainbow. There's a lot of units now that get plus two key from like rainbow orbs. So making rainbow orbs isn't the is the one and the new kid Goku who's also a free to play LR gets like attack bonus for having a bunch of rainbow keys. So maybe you can have a team that just eventually makes the entire field rainbow keys without using any item. <laughs> but also uh, he is tech though, so he doesn't go on either one of the teams. That's unfortunate. But let's talk about the real thing. This fucking picture of Bajin Boo is amazing. Are you talking about the zoom in of him behind Oob? Yes, this fucking like, <laughs> I like the goodbye, uh, goodbye trunks fucking Majin Vegeta pose that he's doing is yeah, amazing. Yeah, that actually looks like it's directly pulled from the Majin Vegeta pose. It does sort of look like uh, Boo is mocking Majin Vegeta. He's like, I know how to say goodbye. <laughs> I do this better than you. Goodbye, Oob. <laughs> goodbye, everyone. It is Satan. Goodbye, Satan. And it, you, especially you, Goku. Boo. <laughs> and yes, even you, Goku. Boo. Goku's like, what? 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 And then he. What happened? What is more Boo chocolate? Dead? Oh yes, Boo dead. <laughs> Goku's first reaction is like, wait, Majin Boo is alive. <laughs> I thought that was Mister Boo. I thought that was a completely different guy. Uh, yeah, I don't know much about this genie pants, but this one picture of Boo kind of makes me feel like giving him a 5 out of 5. <laughs> it is a pretty good Boo picture. This picture um, of Boo is so good! Look at him! It's a lot better than his transformed art, where he kind of looks like he's, like, a uh, cosplaying Gogeta. It does look like he's a, a cosplayer of Gogeta. One of the... Yeah, like, he went to the movie... 
but because it was just a movie and not like a con, he didn't do his hair or anything. Yeah, but so he's, he's just wearing the genie pants and the vest. But he also has the steely determination of a person of color that's like, fuck you guys, I am going to wear this. It doesn't matter, my skin <laughs> it color. It doesn't matter if I'm not the same color as Gogeta, I'm still going to do it. Is that Hell what you're yeah. saying? Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to rock this shit hard. Fuck all you. <laughs> steely determination. Yes. Like, I feel... <laughs> Like, again, I think we've gone on record of saying I think Majib is a big meme and that I don't think he's very good. But I can't deny the fact that his art looks pretty good here and that Majid Buu in the background looks amazing. So, but you know, and given that he is a GT unit, my 5 out of 5 would go down to 3 out of 5. Okay. Um, I'm going to give him a 4 out of 5. Because uh, he didn't even bother to dye his hair for the cosplay. Ah, uh, that's fair. Oh, hates... but wait, the, the Super Attack animation is up. Let me watch it before I make my final determination. Oh, wait, good good point. So the non-transformed one is just a Kamehameha. But the boo oh, is, is in the background when you summon him. <laughs> yes, <laughs> when you see the animation, Kamehameha, he punches him and blasts him again. Oh, no, this is, must be the 18 key. Yeah, this yeah. is the 18 key. So he punches him, and he shoots him to the ground, and then he does a Kamehameha. That's pretty cool. That's not bad. It turns green, and there's, like, an atom explosion. That's pretty cool. Uh, oh, I will say it, it's better than the LR Super Saiyan 4's animations. It is. Oh, no, he doesn't have a counter. This is him. Oh, my God. Is that his transformation? His transforma Yes! What Ooh, the like fuck? Hyperimposes on him. Holy shit! This is better than Broly's animation. <laughs> what? It's better than all of them. Oh my god! Uh, and he hits him with the candy beam. It's the candy beam. He turns him into chocolate. Does he eat him though? Does he no, eat him? No, but the chocolate flies up in front of the screen. That's pretty good. Oh shit! Okay, this is actually pretty awesome. He's making like a swirl, and then a beam shoots out of the swirl, and then he the fucking beam. explodes. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Uh, I'm, I'm upping it. I'm upping him to a five out of five after that, and then so he goes down to a three out of five. Yes, with I think you know what we give a lot of shit to Dokon. This L free LR is really fucking cool. Yeah, he's fucking awesome, actually. Like, uh, his passive skill is, you know, it's obviously never going to be on par with a lot of the uh, LRs you get in Banner. But a lot of it is also just style. Like, how cool is this dude to use in actuality? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously he has the problem of that he transforms after 40%, uh, where he's below 40%, so he's never going to transform. But he's got so much style, I don't care. I would take the hits intentionally yeah. to get him to transform yeah yeah that's what i'm kind of feeling too so there we go we uh a surprise entrance lr oob and boo uh, majub well whatever oob and mr boo let's call it fair let's yeah. call it that even though that's not the name now, on the card uh we have vegeta jr yeah who has all the negatives of vegeta combined with all the negatives of a shitty little kid Oh, that's perfect. That means... Yeah, well, look at his fucking shorts. What is this man's, like... Okay, th this art where his arm is, like, to the side looks like he's actually a some kind of demon monster. He looks like a misposed... Yeah, he's punching with one arm, but then the back arm is, like, twisted all the way around as far as it can go. Yes. It's... It is... Oh, my God. It is disgusting. Look like He does look like a toy that's completely out of shape. Like I yeah, think, yeah, it's not good. Losing the fight, it's not good. Losing the fight loses a lot of like the context of the pose. I think this is something that um sometimes Dokkan forgets is that a cool pose looks stupid if you don't have context. Yeah, and that's one, and that's definitely his. What? Let's Look see what else. Is. Stupid fingerless gloves. Oh, they're fingerless. They are fingerless gloves and shorts. You know what this this guy does deserve to have the mantle of Vegeta on him because that yeah. is yeah, God Almighty. So what's um, he, what's he looking at the uh, passive and skill wise? Uh, so I clicked his information and it didn't really give me much um, on the passive. Mm -hmm. It's like they're trying to hype up that they're going to at some point reveal it or something. Hmm. It says 
Super Saiyan Vegeta Jr., take your own attack and defense rise and attack at the start of the turn and rise further attack for four turns. Uh, in addition, the leader skill and passive skill in the Limit Z Awakening coming soon to be implemented with Strengthened. Mm -hmm. So it looks like I cannot read Moon Runes, but I, have inf I can infer a little bit based on the actual real letters in here. Um, it looks like he gets some sort of attack and defense 60% at the start of the turn, and then when there's some other... It looks like after five turns, maybe he starts getting key plus two and another 50% attack. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, here's the thing. Um, your skill is HP attack and defense 77% up to something. Hmm. And he gets his own free potential system stuff. Yes, because he's Goku Jr., but now it's Vegeta. And he doesn't have an easy A, so he is worse. Not worse, but he does. Not... He does have he one. He does? Do we have info well, on the easy A? that he has one, so I mean, he it's 50-50 shot. Okay. So let's assume that he is around on par with Goku Jr., except for he is Vegeta Jr. And we don't have a special attack to go on at all, right? Uh, You mean his super animation? Yeah. Yeah, we have one. Okay. It's okay. It's pretty mid, but... It's mm. it's basically Super Saiyan Four Vegeta's, but without like the dynamic camera angles. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Yeah, I just can't get anything for Vegeta Junior. I never watched that special, so just his unit is similar to that other unit. In remember when Fusions came out, and we had a uh -huh. unit that was the hero unit, and then we had the guy that kind of looked like Vegeta. That's what Vegeta Junior is to me. So that's just a <laughs> a one. A 1 out of 5, and then because of GT, he gets minus 2, so he is a negative 1 out of 5. Uh, yeah, I'm going to give him a, a solid 0 out of 5. So his score is negative 3. <laughs> yep. It's just, again, if you like Vegeta Jr., congrats, you're getting him. But this is our scale, and we real Vegeta <laughs> Jr. is not doing anything for us. Yeah, Vegeta Jr., you got to go, bro. Yeah, sorry. You got to go. Get out of here. All right, then. That's our... And no baby news, right? No news on LR Baby? Not that I see. Okay. So they're keeping that hidden for now. So now we now exit the Grand Tour. Thank you for joining us in our emergency <laughs> broadcast of the, <laughs> of the Grand Tour. <laughs> we now return you to Videl score, which we completely went past. Oh, right. Videl. So, um, Videl. So... I don't give a shit about how good she is because uh, all that's gobbledygook to me about whatever she did. Yep. But her art is pretty good. Like, like if she flew at me like that, I would catch her. Definitely. So I'm going to say four out of five. I feel kind of the same way. I like Fidel in any form. So I'll say four and out of five. She is properly pigtailed. So. It's true. This is before uh, she took the advice from Gohan. Which did not help, right. because apparently Spovovich still grabbed her by the hair. Yeah, grabs her by the hair still. <laughs> was not effective. Yeah, not effective at all. Good job, Gohan. You Thanks, fucked Gohan. up. Thanks, Gohan. haircut, and it didn't even help. Mm -mm. All right, let's see. And I believe there is one other gal that we need to talk about. It's the most important gal. It's everyone's favorite, Mai. <laughs> Uh, I kind of love Mai, so that better not be sarcasm. <laughs> no, I do love Mai. Let me take that back. I laughed because uh, not everyone would say that, but I also love Mai. Yeah, Mai is great. Yeah, Mai, Mai was great in Dragon Ball, and she got better when she turned into a little kid, and then we got way better when she got turned into Future. Yeah, Future Mai is, is definitely the best Mai. Yeah. That's a top Mai right there. And her passive, uh, her her uh, unit name in uh, Jeff and Google Translate is "I love illuminate the future." Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And I can pa see that. Her passive skill is resistance traction, energy plus three to speed attribute allies attack and defense twenty percent up, and Peachy Gals uh, has a chance of triggering a ten percent up. So, uh, so speed allies get attack and defense twenty percent. And then if they're also girls, then they get ten percent more. If I that might be, I think that's how it goes. Okay, and that seems really bad. You know what? From what I remember, I might be reading it wrong, but it might be that, um, peachy gals also get the attack and defense twenty percent up, but then they also have an additional chance to get ten percent more. 
for each unit on. So I think her thing is it's for each gal that's on the team. So that would mean okay. that she would give 30% to females because of the that's how many are on that turn. So if then okay. if they're also is they're agile then they get an additional 20% attack and defense. Again, okay. can't tell cuz it's in Google Translate, so I'm doing my best here. <laughs> but let's assume that's that. Um her link skills are brain school, precise assistance, calm judgment, woman brain warrior. Brain school. Yeah, brain school. Future of despair and rebirth. So, from what I understood, and again, reading that passive is weird because it's, again, moon runes. Uh, from what I understood is that she was actually very good on the Peachy Gals team. So, let's assume that that passive okay. is very good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is my, this is Valentine's Day, my, and her art is, of course, uh, her rocking a gun and then looking very flustered with the gun. <laughs> Yeah, I like that she's taken the gun off because that that leads me to believe like, hey, where are we going with this? You know what I mean? That's that's flirtatious art. Yes, she also did not she have also... the she did not have the gun in the previous art. I want to say it actually looks like compared to the previous art, she got into a fight, and this is after the fight. Yeah, because her her like jacket's all torn up, and she's covered in dust and like bruises. Yeah, this is a this is a my that's actually a reflective of the terrible future she lives in. But you know she's so, doing her best. I like to think this my like this my could protect you. Like she went out and kicked ass and then came back and then she was like, "Hey, baby." Yeah, one hundred percent. Wed moment. Don't yeah. worry, he can't hear you. <laughs> he has his ear, his AirPods in. He can't hear you. <laughs> Just Jesus. kidding. We're back after that uncle distraction. But yeah, this my looks like she could definitely. She's out protecting you with this one. This is after the legends fight where she just saved you from uh getting taken down by broly even though <laughs> broly would have the advantage in this situation she did not care right still shot him in the face she shot him in the face and then tagged out to somebody else who then got bonus key yeah because and she tagged to them yes i feel like at this point this version of my is actually the vessel of legends of my afterwards so it's like a. So this is what Legends Mai does after she like relaxes after the battle. A hundred percent. And then viewing her through that angle, I think that helps her on the scale a bit, just because. A hundred percent. Yeah. One hundred percent. So yeah, that's her unit. What do you feel? What do you feel? What are you feeling on the big scale? Um. I am gonna go with a four out of five mm-hmm. because my cannot be as high as chi chi and that's the only reason i think that's fair i think i'll also give a four out of five if this was specifically legends my on a very different like legend style scale it'd be a five out of five big boy but that's not what she is she is the spirit she is afterwards so it's a four out of five for me as well with her just being i really do like her look the fact that she has the gun now (laughs) and she's just so shy about everything yeah, she looks super embarrassed that you caught her with the gun. Yeah, it's real nice. Which is a... Uh, yeah, it's real nice. Just It's very nice to look at. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to say that in the most uncreepy way possible, but it just wasn't. Yeah, in the most mm-hmm. like non-threatening way. Yeah, not, not able. Not able. So shout out yeah, to the 1% really female out there. Out, right? it's, it's not going to work out. No, unfortunate. All right, then. That's everyone on the scale. Let's do a quick recap. <clears throat> we have uh, we have Android 18 having a 3 out of... F- Android 18 on a, a carnival horse or whatever you called it, horse. What Mary was it? She's using that move from Kingdom Hearts 3 where you ride the horses. Yes. Merry-go-round horse. That's a 3 out of 5. We got Pigtail flying at you like a happy dog, Videl. 4 out of 5. We have Mai with the strap gun. Because I realized halfway that I was saying something bad. Yeah, that's good save. <laughs> yeah, thank thank you. Good uh, save. Thank you. Uh, she's also a 4 out of 5. And then we have our surprise entrance of Vegeta Jr. having a negative 3 out of 5. And LR, <laughs> uh, Oob, and Mr. Boo somehow uh, getting through minus 2 on the big, on the G, due to GT, got a 3 out of 5 big boy. Yeah, that's as good as it gets for GT units. 
It's true, except for B-Pan but, and Giru. Well, that's because Giru is immune. Yeah, Giru, Giru just dabs too hard to be, you know. That much finesse allows him to not be affected by the scale. All right, then. Let's move on to some questions. <clears throat> so we had, we got someone... Um, someone sent this question in to us, and they also sent it in to us by, um, through comments. <clears throat> But let's start through with Raiders fan. It might actually be Raiders fan double dipped, and he asked in comments of the video, <laughs> and then also asked this here. But he wants to ask the very important question: What if it was Obama? That is a good question. What if it was Obama? It's hard to tell. Like, would what... you have ranked Vegeta Junior that low if it was Obama? I feel Obama would have made a better Dokkan card. I can agree. I yeah, feel, I think I think if it was Obama instead of Vegeta Jr., uh, the card quality would be a little higher. I, <laughs> we start out to think double back on some units and go like, okay, but what if this was Obama? Would we feel the same? <laughs> would we? Yeah, we have, we're going to have to have a special episode where we go back through the big boy scale and we uh, measure each one if it was Obama. Yeah. What if, if it was Obama riding a merry-go-round horse? He would get. He would have got it a higher score. <laughs> what? Um, what if it was Obama in Piccolo's clothes here to save Gohan? <laughs> the score would have <laughs> stayed the same. What? What if it was Obama with a big picture of a superimposed fat boo behind him? <laughs> God damn it! I'm gonna have to Photoshop that now. You know that, right? <laughs> All right. This is a very good question. I think the answer is that a lot of Dokkan card art would be better with Obama. Yeah, that's, I mean, you're not wrong. I feel like that would fix a lot of them. What if, it, you know that uh, Botamo and Magado uh, card? You know where it's two dudes <laughs> riding on each other? Yeah. <laughs> what if it was Obama as one of the cards? Like, like it was one of them and Obama, or if they were both Obama? Shit. Okay, so there's three versions of that card. One card is Bogoto and Obama. The other one is Magoto and Obama. And then the last Neither one is... Neither one of those are the right names, by I know. the way. I, again, did not watch Super, don't know their names. And the final one is Obama, <laughs> Obama. And <laughs> it's Obama and riding it's on Obama top of Obama. On own shoulders. Yes. Immediately, the card would be awesome. What Universe if it was B, Obama? Universe 6 would have... Uh, one if Obama was a part of their team. <laughs> oh man, now we need the meta Obama army instead of cooler. <laughs> it's just a bunch of robot Obamas. Robotic, the big uh, Getty Obama. Just a giant <laughs> Obama star in the sky. <laughs> the father said Kamehameha, but in the background, it's Obama helping Gohan. <laughs> God. Uh, perfect this is kind of related i couldn't find them which is unfortunate maybe it's for the best i do you remember when i photoshopped goku with martin luther king jr no i don't i forget what it was i think Codell was asking for something and i said you know what that would mean what if uh martin luther king jr when he was giving a speech had the father son goku in the background ah i wait i do remember that so I took the father son Goku and I put it behind <laughs> Martin Luther King and then I did an alternate one where they were like high fiving and I could not find them. Oh dear God. <laughs> some great work. Those are some terrible files to lose. Yeah. One day I'll find them maybe. <clears throat> but th those were some pretty great edits, I'll say. <laughs> you it's unfortunate no one will see them. <laughs> uh, oh God. Thank you for the question, Raiders fan. Uh, next question comes in from Sky, and Sky asks, "What's the biggest issue, and how would you fix it in Dokkan?" I I skipped when she said Dokkan. What's Dokkan's biggest okay. issue, and how would you fix it? Um, um the banner. Man, get in line. Yeah, yeah. I, I think poles are the biggest problem still. Poles are the biggest problems. I'm not one of those sadist people who go like, no, I like R's and SR's in the banner when they don't do anything. <laughs> when they're fucking valueless garbage. Yeah, I love yeah. that. So what would I, this is what I would do if it were me. I would literally get rid of 
almost every single RSR except for a very select few. But those select few that are actually decent SRs would just get Dokkans into SSRs. <laughs> and then also I would eliminate a lot of SR SSRs. That's the next on the chopping yeah, block. Yeah, I mean, I think that just culling the pool in banners would be so huge. Yeah. Just so you're not sifting through the same crap. And also, stop putting garbage ban units as banner features every single time. Yeah, that would be one. That's that's one issue I would fix, let's say. I'm not sure like, if it's... It's really frustrating when you get a Super Vegito animation and it doesn't matter because you have a pretty good shot at getting trash from it. Yep. So, obviously, Super Vegito and Super Saiyan Blue Vegito would do the exact same thing, which be guaranteed an actually good unit. If there's right. an LR on but that banner... Super, but at least Vegito Blue would be LRs only. Yeah. So there would be differences. Also, take out half the fucking animations because they all do the same shit now. Yeah, kind of. The only ones that are like, don't, if you're going to make dudes show up that don't make sense, like if I'm going to have a Majin Buu with uh, Kid Trunks and Gohan, like don't even show me that animation. <laughs> that doesn't mean anything. Like, yeah, it doesn't matter at all. And don't crack the screen on multis. Also, if you're doing a guaranteed SSR pull, and it's not if if you see Super Saiyan three Goku and it's not a good unit, don't show it. Because I always yeah. get an SSR. What's the point of you showing me that I'm going to get an SSR? Yeah, it, it, the whole like in a multi summon, mm -hmm. I feel like it should literally just be the guys at the beginning, and then do they fuse or not, and that's it. Mm -hmm. No Kamehameha pull. No, because what's the fucking point? Yeah. The only one that matters at all is Super Saiyan God. So if you don't get at least that, none of the animations make it like they don't mean anything. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. And then, um, yeah, that's one step. I just want to get that banner fixed. Because, again, summoning on Dokkan is a crapshoot. It is horrible. And the only people who don't uh, think it's horrible are the people who don't get bad luck. Or are delusional. They don't get bad luck, or they just are willing to spend stones until they get what they want, which is fine. Yeah, if that's uh, how you choose I, I to solve I, of all it. people, am obviously not anti-whale. No, if you um, want a whale, do what you want. Right, but I, I the Dokkan definitely has a really bad uh, cost-per-value ratio. Yeah. It's really skewed. And considering Dokkan pretty much doesn't have gameplay, uh, it's even worse, in my opinion. I would also say that um, I'd, why I would pri prioritize banners, I feel like now that they've added coins, they have zero motivation to actually try and fix the banner. Yeah, they're going to use the coins and say, oh, it's fine. No, they'll get That's something cool. they want eventually in a year. And if they're whales, they'll get it eventually even faster. Yeah. Well, they won't because, again, when we tell them that they can get this unit now, they'll be able to get this unit now. So yeah, that's what I would do. And Zen, you're kind of feeling the same? Not not going yeah, that far into I'm, game I'm pretty, Yeah. I mean, gameplay is too hard to fix. It, it's too far gone. I, I, I could write a whole like goddamn thesis paper on how to fix that shit, but mm -hmm. it, not, not in the time I have to answer this question. It's fair. Thank you for the questions, guy. Next question comes from Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan. And he asks, can you tell everyone to save up for Int Goku Black on Global? We don't have that kind of power. <laughs> yeah, I, I, of all people, am not going to say I can convince anyone to or not to pull. No, um, it's crapshoot. Yeah, you do whatever you want with your stuff. I don't yeah. even think Int Rosé is that good, is he? No, that's why he's asking. Oh, I, I think that's so, the so can we trick the people? To... <laughs> yeah. Because Enkoku Black is the fucking... is the uh, transforming unit who has not as good as a super as the non-transforming <laughs> Goku Black. Ah, so he's Turles times two. Yes, except for not as not very good. Well, not he's good, just not the greatest. If that makes sense, a lot of people are just kind of disappointed in him. They're not saying he's bad. He's just kind of like, I wish he wasn't a transforming unit. Right. Yeah. So no, we don't have that power, but if you know, if anyone wants to save up for Int Goku Black on Global, I do not care about Global. So good luck with that. And also Gogeta yeah. and Broly just came out, 
so they ain't saving shit. <laughs> I hope the best for you. Yep. Thank you for the question. Next uh, question comes from Camden Filler, who asks, could we see racist Deku card in Dokkan? I'm thinking including Piccolo in his super attack. Also, his active skill is to build a wall. Uh, apparently, racist, racist Deku is the only good thing to come out of Jump Force so far. Yeah, so the story of, of racist Deku is a long one and a beautiful one for those of you that somehow don't know. Yeah. Um, so some people on Twitter made a joke about Deku's line where he calls Piccolo a villain. And Piccolo's like, I'm not a villain, I'm just a Namekian. And everyone made a joke that he was racist because he said all Namekians are villains. Yeah. Uh, and for some reason, the shitty news outlets grabbed that and screenshotted the tweets. And they were like, oh my god, people are in a fucking uproar over the injustices in Jump Force, <laughs> which obviously no one actually is. No one is. And so now, it today has been just the best day of Twitter. Just full of memes of Deku being racist. <laughs> Oh, it's great. Did you see the one that was LR Frieza, but they photoshopped Deku's face over Zarbon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> it's really good. It is good. Uh, and obviously, no one actually thinks Deku is racist. No, of course not. It was just a meme that, that got made even funnier by news outlets being like, oh my god, we need something to talk about. Yeah. I also thought it was kind of a reference to uh, the fact that Kid Goku, when he saw Kami, he thought he was also Demon King Piccolo. But Piccolo does not have time to tell Deku, okay, so I was, and then I'm not, and then I fused with a god, and I'm back to my normal self. But my normal yeah, self... Yeah, he, he wanted to explain himself, you yeah. know? <laughs> my normal Just self... Just because Deku's a, a fucking racist, he doesn't have to explain himself No, to he doesn't Deku. have to explain shit. He doesn't need to know his struggles. You don't owe Deku anything. Nothing. Get your um, get your Mississippi smash out of here. <laughs> oh my god! One of my favorite tweets was uh, finding out that Deku is racist really puts Detroit Smash in a whole new light. <laughs> uh, uh. That's awful. Uh. Ah, oh, racist Deku. It's really good, man. Thank That's you for really good. Thank you for being the one shining force while Jump Force is coming There's out. There's also one where they photoshopped his hero costume to be the same color as a KKK outfit. <laughs> wow. Really good. That's insane. That's also funny. All right, thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Ryad. What do you think of Bandai not giving us rewards for top grossing for a week? I don't think anything. Yeah, I I feel like they just kind of do whatever they yeah, want. They, they do um, whatever they want. And then people will forget the second they give rewards. And then they go, oh man, that's a lot of stones. Thank you. Or unless they, are, they unless, get kind of greedy with it, though. It's weird for me to ever be on Bandai's side. Yeah. But I feel like when the game gets top grossing like six times in the same celebration, they might not be obligated to give you shit every single time. Yeah, they're not. It's it's a thing it's of just like a lot, you know, like it, it, it's a lot mainly because I'm also being I'm like someone who doesn't buy a lot of stuff. So when I get it, I'm like, cool. But also, I don't feel like I. OK, here's the thing. 300 stones is never going to happen again. You guys got to let that shit go. You're never going to get that yeah, much amount of stones die. ever Please. again. So the idea of like, oh, we should get more, you know, 150, that's a lot. But there's obviously more coming. There's not. <laughs> there just isn't. Yeah. And they've given plenty enough, I think. You know, the celebration, a lot of people go like, oh, there's not a lot of stones. But as someone who, again, who doesn't spend any more. There's a decent amount of stones. You just got to wait for it. That's all it is. Yeah, I feel like with celebration rewards, they want to, like, do fucking four multis on the banner, you know? Yeah. Uh, it's just not going to happen. Yeah, it's just not going to happen. So I just feel like if it was the first time we had gotten top rewards, uh, t uh, top grossing, it would have been weird, but we had already hit it, like, twice. So, they had already given us rewards twice. Right. 
So how many times can you reward me for whales doing all the job? <laughs> yeah, how many times am I going to get free shit for not contributing? Yeah, and the answer is I got it twice and I'm fine. Like, I don't need them to be like, here's 150 tickets. And I go, fuck you. <laughs> here's a, <laughs> can I, I don't need that. Uh, but I also understand, I guess some people just want free stones. And I, I feel that. But also, I don't feel like... Yeah, I, I respect the struggle. You gotta get the stones where you can get them. Yeah. It's not a good situation anything, but you should also not get bent out of shape. It's not worth it. Yeah, agree. Yeah. All right, thank you for the question. Next question comes in from L.R. Icardin, and he asked, What are your thoughts on the four-year anniversary, aside from not enjoying the GT stuff? Also, since I've been, I've seen people ask questions that don't really relate to Dokkan, what are your thoughts on the current arc slash developments in uh, My Hero Academia manga? So, first okay. part, uh, the four year, it's been okay so far. I've been getting stones. The banner didn't give me anything, but that's Dokkan. None of the units, again, because it's GT, none of the units super, except for LR Oob, which just came out, <laughs> so... <laughs> I'll say yeah, in terms LR Oob is on some hero shit. And then the fucking tickets gave me another LR Bojack, so I'm just kind of like, this is an okay celebration. I'm just kind of annoyed with my pools. Oh, another Bojack? Gave me another fucking Bojack. And from the tickets, I got uh Chiaotsu and Tien and uh, no Goku and uh Go Goten and Trunk showed up after I made them LR and then I pulled on the ticket banner and then they gave me um they gave me another Bojack, which I saw it as they threw a Bojack through my fucking window and gave me another one. <laughs> uh, how do you feel? Again, you're also kind of weird because you're just a passerby of Dokkan. So how's the four-year been treating yeah, you? Yeah, I mean, it's fine. Um, I think a lot of people gave it more shit than it deserved in some ways, and then they also gave it more credit than it deserved in some ways. Um, yeah. It was very average. Uh, anniversary banners are usually traps. These ones are uh, included. Mm -hmm. um, not traps as in there's only shit in there, but just traps as in like every single person I've ever seen gets mad when they pull on anniversary banners until they finally pull so many fucking times that uh, they get what they wanted. Except for D-Free. Except for D-Free. Um, he just had a baby, and I'm pretty sure he's going to return that baby to the hospital for a refund. <laughs> for until, LR, going. until LR for Super Saiyan Goku. Goku comes out. Yeah. Man. Yeah. that's. I think that's also the kind of the thing, like, if the anniversary, it really good, it does depend on what you pull. If you got something yeah. you wanted, then the anniversary is great. If you don't, then the anniversary is just another day. Yeah, and that's sort of a Dokkan issue. Yeah. In that you can't ever really release enough content to be, like, sated in Dokkan because all the content is relatively the same just because of the power just like the power disparity between events and the player. Yeah. You either have content that you just absolutely shit on and just obliterate it, or you have content where it's too skewed against you and you're just praying that you get a good dice roll. And neither one of those things are that fun. No. Um, so no. I, I don't know a lot of people who sit down and play Dokkan for long periods of time because of that. So like a, a big content-focused anniversary just doesn't really play to its strengths. Um, and having but then obviously you just you don't want to ever be stuck with just polls, but mm -hmm. it's what it is. Yeah, I feel like. These anniversaries are, which is why I'm glad that I play multiple gacha games, because I can just go, well, I'm done for Dokkan for the day, and I'm going to move on to another game that I actually like to play until yeah. I decide when it's time to pull again. Uh, because if I don't have a new unit to play out in Dokkan, then Dokkan doesn't change. The fights aren't so different that it's like, Okay, so now my uh, revival team is going to be fighting, I don't fucking know, Roshi. Let's assume there's a really powerful Roshi the unit that's coming in. That <laughs> never happens. But if there was, the fight would be the same regardless. Unless he had a link skill. and Or depending on the match type, the game would be just harder. Or you have more HP. But there's right. not... 
It is a Jokon is at its best when you're using units that you like and you have new ones and you want to test them out. Like when you're testing out a new unit, that's when it's the most fun. But the second that the unit is gone and the flavor is gone, it's like gum. You just want another piece of gum. And Yeah, that's a that's a good way to put it. Like um Dissidia is going through its one year anniversary right now. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean they're giving you free pulls and stuff but not like a shit ton but that's okay because the like they're giving you all this stuff that you can't normally get very easily like um you awaken your units by giving them crystals mm -hmm. and then there's a special gap from level 50 to level 60 that's called like uh, tier 4 awakening and those crystals are really hard to get they're like gated well for the anniversary they added them to daily missions so you're just getting a shit ton so you can level up all the people you already have that you haven't really been able to use yet because maybe they share a type with another guy you want to use more or whatever that you put the crystals into. So it's a, like this one is really good that, yeah, you're probably going to get some cool weapons that you can put on people that you weren't using before, but also you can get a lot more use and a lot more fun out of what you already have that you just haven't been able to build yet. Yeah. And something like that in Dokkan is, I don't know, it's weird. Again, it's four years of Dokkan. There's only so yeah. much you can do. And I think also Dokkan suffers from not having an autoplay. Because having to do the same thing over again by hand. A lot of other yeah, new... Farming in Dokkan is, is, not, uh, is not the way. No, it's bad. And I feel like a lot of gacha games get a lot of mileage out of the fact of like, well, I don't actually play them until it's time to get serious, but I still grind them because it has auto battle. So right. when and I've I... seen a lot of people that are like, well, if you have auto battle in Dokkan, you might as well never turn it off because Dokkan more or less is auto battle normally. And that's true. I mean, I mean, the gameplay is literally you just tap the screen mm -hmm. anywhere on it and you win. Um. But they don't have to only do auto battle. I mean, you could do skip tickets like Legends has. You could do... I'm a big fan of what Duel Links does, where when you go into a battle, you can spend up to three times the amount of stamina equivalent and get three times the reward. So it's like doing three three runs at a time. That's really good. Yeah, I think either one of those would be good for Dokkan, but this fucking 11 runs per unit... Only for one guy is like not it's not it. Nope. And especially with like stuff like the potential orbs. Like, do I really need to constantly fight this sand monster to get Giru up and running? No. I don't. <laughs> like I don't need anything. <laughs> yeah. It's it's just Yeah. Dokkan is improving in a lot of ways. Um that they're putting out a ton of quality of life updates and stuff, but they are still also really behind the times in a lot of ways yeah and uh for your the the next part of your question what are your thoughts on the current arc and development of my hero i mean up until the reveal of what happened to deku i was just kind of not feeling anything about it because i think i said it before i've said it on twitter but class a versus class b is the worst idea because what are the stakes when they're literally saying there's really no stakes other than this one character might become a hero depending on it. But it's also like maybe then just focus on him and maybe save all the other <laughs> dudes for the anime because the anime needs filler. Like I don't. Yeah. And I like and I like a lot of the characters there. It's just like I can't you can't get me hype for training when there's no real consequences at the end like nobody in class a is going to go down to class b or no one from class b is going to go up to class a what's going to happen is which i knew from the beginning is class a is just going to win it and then class b is going to be oh darn we did our best though yeah because which is what happened <laughs> which is what happened uh, <laughs> so my hero is in a weird place because Mm -hmm. It it really rocked the the school kid aesthetic for a while. Yeah. Um. But you know, when Naruto fought Zabuza, it stopped fucking showing him in gym class after that, right? Yes. Like once you start doing real big kid shit, and you show me Deku like 
flipping through fucking skyscrapers and punching overhaul into the ground and leaving giant craters, you really can't get me hyped for class time anymore. Not really. And so uh, this entire arc on its own was just, God, it's so, it was so boring. Uh, I know there's a bunch of people who are like, eh, it's you know world building or whatever, but I don't give a shit about any of these class B characters whose names I'm not going to remember and then they're going to show back up in like four chapters to say four things and then leave like and, they always do. And then they they show what is now officially because I'm no longer on the train of like Bakugo is the worst character. They show the actual worst character, which is the guy from class B who is an unbearable asshole. Oh, the douche guy who just screams at them all the time. Yes. And I'm like, I don't yeah. I don't understand why you have such a stick up your ass. Because it's literally just a letter, dude. Well, I mean, at this point, I think they think it's a gag that people like, but it's actually not one. It's not funny at all. Like, it's nothing not about it is funny to me. The only part of this arc I liked was actually Bakugo. Yeah. Because now he's kind of protecting people in his own way. Like, he jumps in and saves her. Yeah. But he still did it kind of like an asshole. <laughs> And I like that Funky Kong showed up, returning from his Donkey Kong 64 days in human form. <laughs> also true. Like, there, there, was, there was some interesting stuff, but it just took too long. And in terms of what's next for it, I don't know. But I really hope that now that this is done, we can go on to some good stuff. Yeah, and I mean, now they're doing the whole Deku has, I forget how many quirks it was. What was it? Seven. Six? Six, yeah. Seven. Six. Um, but Which, I don't care. Because they're not going to talk about it again for another, like, two years. Probably. And then it was also, it's also funny because everyone was like, I can't believe he's already mastered it. And then the next chapter, he had not mastered it. <laughs> and then it was yeah, like, was like, oh my god, he has, there's no one that can stop him. He has seven quirks now. And then the very next chapter, they were like, you're never going to get to use this. <laughs> yeah. And I knew from the start okay. that eventually my hero would get this way because when i started my hero it was again uh you know not to be like all oh i started it early but it did start it early because a friend of mine just went like hey there's a new shonen jump thingy you should check it out because it's kind of like x-men and i'm like i like x-men and i read it and i was like this is pretty good i really hope that it gets popular and then monkey paw wish it becomes so popular now that it there's only extremes now there's only yeah extreme... you can't be a moderate my hero fan anymore no, and I still am. I just don't talk about it because talking about it just leads me to more. It's the Yoda thing. It leads me to more pain. It leads me to more suffering. It doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't matter if I <laughs> criticize. It doesn't matter if I praise. Either way, I'm in either camp. So I'm like, fuck y'all. I'll just continue reading this manga that I like and keep. If I'm talking to a friend, I will gladly talk to him about it, which I still do. I have a tiny discord with only three people, which is the special friends discord. And when there's uh, developments in My Hero, we go like, hey, so where do you think this is going? And we talk and we just go like, oh, yeah, yeah. It's very nice. It's like the kind of conversation you don't get anymore where it's like, yeah, this is ongoing. Let's talk about it. I think this is the way. But then nobody's really shouting down the other person. And when someone says, oh, I don't like this part, they go like, yeah, I can see that. But I think I kind of like it for this reason. And I go, hmm, all right, I see that. And you just can't do that anymore, especially on Twitter, because anything I say but is... What is the special chat's thoughts on Deku being a racist? Oh, you know what? I should ask them. They've. Uh, I should ask them about... Uh, join us next week when I ask them how they feel about <laughs> racist Deku. <laughs> uh, but yeah, my, the, I'm, again, I'm always interested to see where my hero's going. The arc is not so bad that I'm like, oh, fuck my hero and everything in the world it's just kind of boring <laughs> for uh, me i mean i will say um i have i have turned up my manga intake as yeah. of late quite a bit um i'm like 200 almost 200 chapters into toriko i'm uh, reading the kingdom hearts manga jojo nice and so i kind of oh black clover i, I finally caught up with that um so I'm not really – my hero is not really on my radar because that arc sucked. Mm -hmm. But when it gets good again, I will just get back into it and catch up. Yeah. I certainly have not forsaken it because this arc was extremely boring and uninteresting. But it's just not really on, on my radar right now. 
Yeah, which is I feel like the ultimate sign of what happens to a manga. It didn't. Ever, it never hit that Naruto point. Naruto point where uh, Naruto eventually for me became like, okay, I'm kind of not interested in what this is going on, but I assume eventually it'll pick up, and I just like a, a hundred chapters passed, and I did not. Yeah. <laughs> so the, yeah. So the finals of the Ninja War and everything else, I was just like, eh, not, not really gonna finish this. It's fine. What is Boruto? Why am I in pain? I actually did read the the final chapter. That was the one that I skipped everything and read the final chapter. I respect it. You know, you were watching that for a long time. You gotta at least see the ending. Yeah. And also, here's the funny thing, which I I don't think I've ever said this before, but this is how I watch Naruto. Naruto, all the kid stuff. Shippuden, up until uh the so the the first puppet man dies skip all the way to uh killer b versus kasame (laughs) (laughs) i I can't blame you shippuden sucks all that stuff with the other dudes were thank quote me on that shit yeah viewers like all the the akatsuki which were really cool built-up characters in shadow in the original one ended up just being like i actually don't give a fuck about daidara or this vampire man or this golf cosplayer. I don't care about any of them. <laughs> yeah. So, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's the point? I'm just going to skip. And then eventually the only ones left were Itachi and Kasame. <laughs> mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah, this is and pain, I guess. And I was like, this is, yeah, this are all the Akatsuki that I actually legitimately needed. I did like that. Uh, eventually Konkuro did turn <laughs> the puppet, the puppet Akatsuki member into his own puppet. <laughs> oh that's right he did yeah he had a sasori puppet he's like uh yeah this is technically the corpse of an enemy but uh it does save them in the end when um madara does the whole like i'm gonna fucking bring back everyone or whoever does that uh when they when i believe it was uh kabuto yeah kabuto Kabuto brings back everyone and madara just kind of breaks free but one of those uh the puppet man comes back and then he goes oh man i'm a puppet that's awesome and he fades away <laughs> and daydara's <laughs> like what the fuck <laughs> what just happened <laughs> he's like well he's satisfied with his life and you're gonna get put down a tube or something see you later um yeah but yeah i'm interested to see what's up with my hero next i'm always am even though that arc wasn't the best like people forget that everything even good things have bad arcs like yeah nothing's good all the time no yu yu Hakusho, which i love except for jojo does take a while i will debate the fact that uh, jojo does have in fact some boring stuff but you have not reached it, it yet does. part one is meh and so part six is meh but most of jojo is good and to me part five is super meh in terms of what i was reading really that's my favorite one i know i think we talked about this before but when <laughs> i when i was reading it um that's when the jojo slump started to hit which is what you're hitting at part six it just hit me earlier it was this weird thing of like, yeah, this is technically all the stuff you did before, but this pace is killing me. Like the the slow pace that they're kind of going for, which worked for me with a lot of the other stuff, just wasn't hitting me anymore. And I still like it, of course, because I'm like, yeah, JoJo's pretty cool. It does a lot of stuff that a lot of other mangas just refuse to do. But part five is when it started hitting me of like, I don't really care about what's going on here and i think a lot of it is also because uh, part five is just so its own thing like the events of part five are the events of part five and that's good for like uh you know you don't really need to know much more than that 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 is technically dio and jonathan's weird sperm baby and (laughs) that's it yeah and then it's its own tele- uh, tell uh, its own self-contained story, and that's perfectly fine. That's also just kind of not what I'm into when it comes to that JoJo. I'm into the whole weird family stuff. And by the end of it, and especially by the end of six, it feels like part five was a like it almost should have not been called part five. <laughs> that's how I felt <laughs> like. See, I kind of like that because then we got back to like, oh, it's. Jotaro and them and I was like oh Jotaro has a really shitty kid yes great 
but that that was kind of what I like. I was like, I like the ongoing idea that this is one family, and then for that one <laughs> that one chapter, he was like, uh, "This is the distant cousin," and the distant cousin has a story, and it's a pretty cool story. And then it ends, and it's like, okay, it's like, is that gonna go back to anything else? Nah, not really. Doesn't really need to. And he's right. It doesn't really need to. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that's just kind of what I like best. And then uh, Seven has its drawbacks. Seven is really good. And then for me, it hits a it hits a wall <laughs> that's a very unfortunate, which a lot of people, it seemed like they go like, no, that was great. And I'm like, okay, that's fair. I, I can't really argue anything other than I didn't like it. <laughs> I, yeah, that, that, fair enough. Yeah. That's just, that's just the way it goes. Um, but yeah, like a lot of good, even the mangas I like, like my favorite manga of all time is Ashita no Joe. And I will gladly say that there are some arcs where it's like, I can't believe that it took this long for this guy to start boxing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will say I'm, I'm going to get shit for this, but, uh, so far Toriko starts a little slow. But it's been pretty great ever since then. I haven't really hit a point where I'm like, what the fuck? You know? Yeah. Uh, it, it, it has its a little slow moments in the beginning. A little. Um, but it's been pretty consistent quality. That's good. I mean, at some point, I'm going to have to start it up next. I'm going to have to look into what uh, jump manga am I going to read next. Because... Uh... I'm still on my vision quest of one day reading every single Shonen Jump manga, old and new. Man, you're going to be like in your 50s by the time you're done. Yeah, and then I'm also have to wait for everyone to fucking actually translate it. Because I got like halfway into 200 chapters into Rakuten Enchi Blues. At around a chapter 150, Rakuten Enchi Blues turns really awesome. And it's around that time that they stop translating it. <laughs> Yikes. So I have the rest of the manga, which is 400 chapters long or so, but it's all in Japanese. So I just look at it and go like, this is really cool art. And this is also a comedy manga, so it's not easy to translate at all. So now I have to wait to... I bet something fucking cool is happening right now. Yeah, I'm like, yeah. It's really awesome that this guy is supposed to be having a boxing match, but also he's giving a backbreaker to this guy and he's dedicating five pages to one backbreaker. And I'm like, hell yeah! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but uh yeah i can't read it because i don't know japanese and the next step is learning japanese <laughs> and i don't know if i yeah, got time i think for at that. some point if you're gonna need to get there it's gonna end up happening yeah it's gonna end up happening uh but thank you for the question and with that what was supposed to be a very quick episode of to be released ended up being way longer because we suddenly got uh info on the lrs <laughs> Yeah, and we, we always tangent on the questions a little bit. We do. We're never 100% on topic. No. Well, to be fair, that these people, um, there was uh, only around... Uh, there was. Uh, I mean, I didn't read the last two questions. Uh, no offense to them. Thank you for sending them in. But um, I feel anyone that gets sent a question, if there's not a lot of questions, we spend a lot of time on those specific people because it's like, great, thank you. This is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it just gives, this gives us a reason to talk. And... Um, yeah, you know, it's fun to record to be released, even though every day we look at Dokkan and go, God, what do we talk about? And then the answer is, this is just a really good vehicle for us to bullshit around with each other. Pretty much. Yeah, it's pretty much just a vehicle for us to talk shit about things. Yeah. And also sometimes talk about Dokkan and put them on big boy scale, which is fun. I like the big I like boy scale. The legend version of this show so that we can also have a big boy scale for that. Eventually. You know what? We'll look into it. Because um, <laughs> here's the problem is that eventually is that we have a lot of stuff to do. But because of my limited time, occasionally it's like, well, we don't have any th- enough time for that. So it gets dropped off a little bit, especially with yeah, something like uh, Concession Stand and uh, Illegal Gaming Chop Shop, which we do have episodes planned for them. It's just literally going, we need the time to figure out and talk about this. We finally had the time slot one time. And for like your internet was fucking up. It was a nightmare. Yeah, it was. It sucked. But you know, we keep trying. We keep doing our best, and we think never everyone. Give up. Yeah, never <laughs> give up. Chase your dreams. Keep be the uh, cup in the water, as Bruce Lee once said. Which I just <laughs> fucked. Always up. protect your honor as soldier. Yes. 
always be going. And with those inspirational words, we say goodbye, everyone, and thank you for watching another episode of To Be Released. Bye.